we are in the QBO gym, and this is where we have numerous hands-on exercises that simulate real-life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Each month covers a variety of new topics and scenarios, and to make it a little bit easier for you, we break it down into four different sections. So if you were looking to work on your bookkeeping skills, this is the place for you. And if you want to do an entire month's worth of these all on your own, be sure to join our free five-day bookkeeping challenge. All you need to do is click on the link in the description. But let's go ahead and get into today's exercise, which is being pulled from our November Year One cardio section. At the top here is an animated video to give you an understanding of what you, the bookkeeper, will be doing for your client, Craig, this month. Below that is an interactive pre-assessment quiz that relates to the video up above. Below that are the exercises in this section. And at the bottom here is an optional area where after you have gone through all of the exercises in this section and completed them, you will unlock some sample marketing posts that you can use on your LinkedIn to share with everyone what you have learned so far. So let's dive into today's exercise where we're gonna practice paying the contractors. Go ahead and click on the link to have the exercise come up for you. I have it here on the right side of my screen, so let's read through the scenario. Now that the contractor's time has been recorded and the invoice have been sent, it's time to pay Keith and Bob. Now remember, you need to be in the same session of the sample company that you did the previous exercises in. If you have not completed those yet, go ahead and click on the link on the top right corner of your screen. That'll take you to that first one, complete that one, and the one after it until you get back to this one. They all build on each other, so it's important to start with the first one. I have the sample company here on the left side of my screen. This is the last page that I left off of from the previous exercise. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. First, figure out how many hours they worked so you know how much to pay them. If Craig were using QuickBooks Time, you could run a similar report there. Since he is not and you use the single time activity and weekly timesheet to record the hours, you'll need to run a report showing their time activities. QBO provides this report, but you'll need to slightly customize it for the purpose of this exercise. So use the following steps to see how it's done. So on the left navigation bar, we're going to click on reports. That's over here, here is that left navigation bar. Reports is halfway down, go ahead and click on it. And then in the find report by name box right here, we're gonna begin typing time. So go ahead and do that. And then we want to select time activities by employee detail when it appears. Now note that even though Bob and Keith are not our contractors, not employees, they will still show up in this report. So go ahead and click on it. And once you do, the report is going to be run for you. Now this report shows the time or shows the total time of each of the contractors. You can see right here. You are going to attach this report to each contractor's bill so you don't so you don't want to see them you so you don't want them to see their billable rate just their hours that they had logged in this period. So we're going to click on customize which is right here at the top. We're going to change we're going to click change columns which is this right here. And then we want to uncheck a couple of things, rates, billable and amount. So rates, billable, and amount, make sure those are all unchecked. And now we can go ahead and run the report. So click on the green button. Now this time you will see that this one is much better, but you only want to see one employee at a time. In a real life scenario, you may wanna save the customization right here so that you can use it again in the future without having to take the time to change it. We're not gonna do it in this exercise, but you would click on this green button in order to do that. Now note that if you are doing this exercise during the first week of the month, you will need to change the time activity date to cover the previous week's date in order to cover the date you chose in the previous exercise. So you may need to make some adjustments up here if you're not seeing all the information if you are doing this in the first part of the month you are in. It really just depends on when you did that timesheet um, from, uh, from the previous exercise when you were logging their time. 
So if you need to make some adjustments, that's where you would do it. And then you would click run report again. But this is what it will look like or should look like. So I'm all good here, but now I need to customize it a little bit further. So clicking on that customize button. And then next to rows columns, we're going to click on the down arrow to collapse these options, which is this one. And then I want to click on the arrow next to filter to open up these options. We're gonna click on the checkbox next to employee, which is right here. And you'll notice that as soon as you do the employee option it moves to the very top of the list. Now, first we're gonna create the report for Bob Smith. So click in this uh, field right here, click the down arrow, and then go ahead and select Bob Smith vendor. Go ahead and do that. And now we're going to run the report, which is the green button on the bottom right corner. And now we are only seeing the one for Bob. So you'll want to export this report so that you can attach it to the bill you will create later. So we're going to click on the export icon and then click on export to PDF. So that is this one right here. Click on that and then export to pre, uh, export to PDF. And then you want to go ahead and save it as a PDF. Um, so your, your prompts may be a little bit different than what you see right here. Just go ahead and click on save as a PDF um, wherever it is on your screen so that you can save it to use later. So go ahead and do that. Mine just downloaded for me. And so I am going to continue on now by clicking out of this and clicking the X to close. Now let's go ahead and run the report for Keith Jones. So we're going to click on customize once again. So click on that. And then this time we're going to uncheck Bob Smith and check Keith Jones. So click the down arrow, uncheck Bob Smith, and then you want to scroll down until you find Keith. And once you find him, go ahead and click on his, uh, the checkbox next to his name, and then go ahead and click on run report. And now this time we are going to be seeing this uh, report just for Keith and his hours worked. So now we want to um, uh, export this report so that we can attach it to the bill we're going to create later. Once again, click on that uh, export icon right here and then export to PDF. And then you're going to follow the prompts on your browser to save this report so you can find it later. For me, I'm just going to go ahead and click on save as PDF and it will download for me. All right, so let's close out of this by clicking on the X right here. And now we can move on. We're going to use that recurring bill to create the payments for the contractors. The reason we are using a bill rather than expense is that with a bill, you can schedule payment with an expense, you can not. So we want to click on the gear icon and then get to those recurring account or tra transactions by clicking on recurring transactions. So the gear icon is on the top right corner. Click on that and then under list, select uh, recurring transactions. In the contractor installation row, we want to select use, which is right here. And when we do, you will see that template come up for us. Now note that the vendor is listed as Bob Smith. This is because you used his name to set up the recurring bill, that template. For now, we will leave it this way and then start his particular bill. So we're going to change the quantity field to five, and this is the number of hours that Bob worked according to the um, according to the report. So scrolling down here, we want to change this right here, this quantity to five. If you hit the tab key, you will see now that QBO has made the calculation. Next, we want to add the attachment that we saved from um, onto our computer. So you're going to click on upload from this device and then follow the prompts in your browser to locate and upload the file you downloaded for Bob Smith. So go ahead and click on this upload from this device button. Now, once you click on the button, go ahead and click on the one. Um, mine is in my downloads file uh, folder, and it's this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and open it. And it looks like there may be an upload error. I think this may be a uh, glitch in the sample company. So if you happen to get this, just go ahead and close out of that error. Um, just know that that is the process that you would do in order to upload um, that report to this particular bill. Now let's just go ahead and save and close this. And note that if it were this were a real life scenario, you would click save and schedule payment here to use QBO's internal payment tool to pay the vendor. 
Because you cannot do that in the sample company, the bills for the vendors will show up later when you pay other bills. So let's just go ahead and click on the green save and close button. And now that one has been saved. Now let's go ahead and do the exact same process this time for Keith. So in the contractor installation row, let's go ahead and click on use. Go ahead and do that. And this time in the vendor field, we want to select Keith Jones. So click the down arrow and then scroll and click on Keith Jones. And then we want to um, change the quantity to five since that's how many hours that he worked. So click into it, go ahead and type five, hit the tab key and you will see that update has been made. Now, next, we're going to add the attachment that we saved on the computer. Once again, we're going to click on upload from this device and then follow the prompts to um, download that file for Keith Jones. So go ahead and click on upload from this device. And then for me, it is this one that's got the one at the end of it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and then click on open. It looks like I have another error here. I think this again is just a glitch in the sample company. So if you happen to get this one as well, just go ahead and close out of it. If, you're happened to, if yours happens to download um, into here, congratulations, it must be working for you. So let's go ahead and assume that we have that attachment right here, and then we're gonna go ahead and click on save and close. Now, once again, if this were a real life scenario, you would click on uh, save and schedule payment, which we right here, to use QBO's internal payment tool to pay the vendor. But since we can't do this in the sample company, the bills for the vendors will show up later when you actually pay the other bills. So let's go ahead and click on save and close on the bottom right corner. And there we go, that has been saved. And now you're finished with the contractors. We're gonna turn our attention in a moment to the telephone bill that was set up incorrectly, but we'll do that in the next exercise. But that's it, that's how you would pay the contractors. Now, if you like this exercise and you'd like to do more like it, be sure to join our free five-day bookkeeping challenge. All you need to do is click on the link in the description. We're gonna continue on and if you wanna join, be sure to leave this session of the sample company open as you will need it for the next exercise where we deal with that recurring telephone bill. And I will see you in the next video.